Jesus, we bless you. Spirit of the living God, feel this place. Fire of the living God, feel this place. Power of the living God, feel
For in our weakness, your strength is made. Somebody say, his strength is made perfect. That's why you need him to dwell. That's why you need him to live. That's why you need him to move in every fiber of your life. Because with our strength, we can only get so far. But with his strength, how many know that nothing is impossible? Somebody say dwell, yeah. you can dwell, Jesus, you can dwell, Jesus, and you can dwell. Children move, Jesus. Yeah. In every decision that I make, you can move. Now somebody say, live. Yeah. How many want him to live? Yeah. You can live, yeah. For your strength is made perfect in our weakness live, yeah. Live. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You can live, Jesus. You can live. situation that you can't figure out, ask them to take over. Hmm. Take over. Say live. Oh yes. 
How many want him to live in your life? Live. The devil's been beating you upside the head too long. Live. You need him to move. Yeah. Come on, you can't sit with your own marriage out. You need him to move. what you want him to take over of and just say come on fill in the blank fill in the blank take over take over take over can we get a little louder a little more pressure do you want it from him say take over Let's tune into the message already in session. Hallelujah. So good to see all your beautiful faces. You could have stayed home and just turned on the fireplace and watched online or watched God TV. Uh, but you decided to press your way to the house of the Lord. Amen. And I'm so grateful. And we, we still love all you who stayed home and watched on TV, but amen. It's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, today I wanted to have a prayer and healing service. Amen. Uh, just the uh, other week, uh, you know, I've been traveling quite a bit and uh, I was at, speaking at a church and they had a prayer and healing service and uh, they wanted me to be uh, the keynote speaker. And I said, I said, Lord, you're really funny to have someone who needs healing come be the keynote speaker for a prayer and healing service. And God gave me a word called the wait at the gate. And it is a powerful, powerful teaching. It's actually on YouTube uh, where I talk about the man who was sat at the gate called beautiful for 40 years waiting for his healing. Uh, and so I will encourage you to check that message out. If you ever feel like you, anybody feel like they're waiting on the Lord to do something. And uh, that's a powerful, powerful teaching. But many uh, people were saved and set free, uh, but many people got healed and there was a lot of testimonies. And I said, well, I'm not gonna do it at one house and not come bring it to the fountain house, amen? So with that said, I wanted, there was a couple of subjects I wanted to pray over because I know one of those, uh, this is sometimes a very difficult season uh, when we're missing loved ones and uh, I know sometimes grief will try to set in during what should be the happiest time in the season. Sometimes even tragedies happen uh, during the holiday season. And, um, you know, when it's time to celebrate Jesus, your heart is remembering what you're going through or you're missing loved ones. And so we wanted to pray over that. Um, I've got a, 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 a brief testimony in that um, just yesterday, uh, my tire went flat, actually two days ago. My tire went flat right when I pulled in the driveway of my house. And uh, it took them about two days, you know, because of the holiday season. And so they came to the house and they, they fixed the tires. When the guy pulled off my tires, he showed me the picture of them. And he said, you ought to thank God that you're alive. I said, what, what's, what's going on? He showed me my tires and they were splitting 
about three of them were splitting and the other one had nails and a razor blade in it. So all the metal was coming out, but you know, I don't ride around on bald tires. He says, no, because you have, your car is more of a sports car, your tires are pronated, meaning that they, they're in like this. So they wear on the inside, not the outside. So the outside looks perfect. The outside of the tire looks perfect, but the inside was torn up. Now, I, I, I went out with my family to go look at Christmas lights in the rain. I took my, my, one of my daughters on a daddy-daughter date, you know, because she's getting to the dating age. I said, well, let me be the first date. Amen. <laughs> and we were, we were out in the rain. And in other words, we were doing regular trips with tires, he says, they could have exploded any moment in the pouring rain. But one thing I always do when I leave anywhere, my children will tell you, is I pray. If I'm going to the, well, I don't go to the grocery store, but if I'm, if I'm, and I don't go to the gas station either, and I don't go to the store, but when I come to church, Wherever I go, I'm always praying. Father, I thank you for a safe trip. Family member, Lord, I thank you for a safe trip. Thank you that your angels are surrounding me. I thank you that I'm covered by your blood. Thank you, Lord, that I'm leaving in peace and I'm coming home in peace. And Cameron and I, we came home, pulled in the driveway. The tire went flat once I got in the driveway. He says, sir, you could have died. He said, because these kind of cars, when the, when, the, when the wheels explode, you could spin out. We've seen terrible, terrible accidents. Not one tire, all four. And I just saw that when I saw the tire, I'm going to get the picture. I'm going to post it. I'm going to post the picture. When I saw the picture, the Lord says, I was watching over you the whole time. And I give glory to God because it could have been a tragedy during the Christmas season, but the word over my life, I can't die, because God still has things to do with me, just like he still has things to do with you. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Thank you for watching over our life all year long. Thank you for keeping our family even when we didn't need, know we needed to be kept. Thank you for your angels watching over me. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name, come on. Hallelujah. Well, listen, the Bible says, in, uh, if you just turn real quick, Matthew 21, I'm going to ask uh, my elders to get in position, those that are going to be praying uh, with me. Amen. I'm going to ask you to come now with your spouse. Amen. If you have one, amen, amen the ones that are coming on the stage to pray. Yeah, there you go. Y'all can just come right up the stairs, actually. I, I appreciate your protocol, amen. Come on, woman of God, Bishop Samama. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 21, verse number one. It says, and when they drew near unto Jerusalem and came into Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately you shall find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to, unto me. And if any man say anything unto you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. And all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king comes unto you meek and sitting upon a donkey and a colt of the foal of donkey. Verse six says, and the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded. And they brought the donkey, the colt, and put them in their clothes, uh, put on them their clothes, and they sat him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried saying, Hosanna, the son of David comes. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, the song we just sang. And when he came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. 
And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called what? A house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. And look at what happened right afterward. And the blind and the lame came in the temple and he healed them. Now, this is a significant passage when Jesus comes into Jerusalem. He has a parade, an unexpected one. And the first thing he does after they're singing Hosanna is turn the temple out. He goes in and he throws over the money changers' tables. Now, many teach that it's because they weren't supposed to be there, but they actually were. I've done a full teaching on that. But it's because they were robbing the people, cheating them. But he threw it over because he says, this is not what my church is about. My church should be a house of prayer. And today we're going to pray over those that are being challenged. And I will call out a couple of subjects and have elders are going to take a moment and pray. But it says that right after, he's, uh, right, right after he says, my house should be a house of prayer, it says, the lame and the blind came in. Now, this is significant because... Remember, David re refused to let the lame and the blind in the temple after he uh, uh, took Zion. I did some teaching on this, and if you listen to that message, The Wait at the Gate, I talk about this extensively. There was a reason that the lame and the blind weren't to come in, because David refused to let them in. So as soon as Jesus reset the temple, the people who were not allowed to come in were allowed to come in. So there was a prayer and a healing service right on the same time, as soon as Jesus came in. Somebody say prayer and healing. That's exactly what we're gonna do today, amen? So with that said, I wanna first begin to pray over grief. Those of you that are grieving, those of you that are challenged, those of you that are hurting in this season, I'm gonna ask you if you want to, you can stand on your feet. I'm gonna have uh, Elder Raymond and uh, uh, Elder Jerry come and pray over grief. Anyone who is grieving, missing a loved one, those of you that are challenged, uh, you can stand on your feet. We want to, we want to pray. Amen? All right, let's go. Our bishop has uh, given an uh, example of how people are grieving during this time period, and it's because of a loss of a loved one. And sometimes we have periods of of depression and the periods uh, of, 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 of grief. But I'm reminded of the scripture in Psalms 42, verse 5. It says, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I will yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And then in verse 11, it says a little something slightly different. Why you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I will yet praise you. You are the help of my countenance. And what I got from that is, as we look to the Lord, we see his face concerning our situation He's the help of our countenance and allow us to change our disposition. But not only that, but he's the health of our countenance and allows us to lift up out of depression, out of the feeling of loss, out of the feeling that we don't have control. And so my wife is going to pray now. And as we do this, I want you to think also that the spirit of the Lord God was upon Jesus, how God anointed Jesus with the, with the Holy Spirit and with power that went about doing good. And then he said, he said, he spoke to those that are mourning in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness. And so we're going to lift that spirit of heaviness off of you now as you lift and look to the face of Jesus. Look to him now. Begin to close your eyes. Amen. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Father God. And Lord, we come before your throne today, Father God. You see each person, Father. You see them individually, Father, as they stand here before you, Father God. And Father, right now, Father God, I thank you, Father God, that they, Father God, are knowing and sensing your compassion for them, Father God. God, that you are compassionate to what they feel, Father. And Lord, I ask you right now, Father, for healing each one of their hearts, every heart that's, that's heavy, Father God. Lord, you said you heal the brokenhearted. Father, and you are near to those that are crushed in their spirit. So right now, in the name of Jesus, every spirit, Father, that feels crushed, God, I thank you that there's a lifting right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. I thank you that you are the all-sufficient one. You are El Shaddai, Father God, and you are sufficient for them. You are Jehovah Rapha, Father. You are their healer, Father God, and I thank you right now that as they stretch their hands out to you, Father God, that you are touching them, that you are healing them. Them, Father God, that the spirit of joy, Father, is coming for, for, Lord, the oil of joy, Father God, for the spirit of mourning, Father. We lift it off of your people, Father God, because you are the prince of peace, Father God. You came to give them peace, Father God, and not just any peace, Father, but the peace that passes all understanding, Father, and let that peace keep their heart and their mind in Christ Jesus during this season, Father God. Let them know, Father God, that you are El Roy He, that you are the God who sees them, Father God. You are the God that cares for them, Father God. And I thank you and I praise you, Father, that the, even their atmosphere in their home is shifting, Father God, and that there's a spirit of joy there, Father God, a spirit of joy. We take authority over the spirit of heaviness. You cannot stay. You will not stay in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the love of God, Father, that you love your people, Father God, that you love them, Father God, and I thank you that they are feeling your tangible compassion and your new mercies, Father God, every day and especially during this season, Father. We give you the glory, Father, for touching your people's lives, Lord, because you love them, Lord God. You're touching them because you care for them, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father, that you are having your way in them, Father God, and that every care is lifted, Father. Every care, every care, Father, is lifted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our next item that we're going to be praying for amen, is we wanted to pray over those that are dealing with offenses, challenges. What is an offense? It's when someone has hurt us, someone has wronged us, and we're having trouble forgiving. Uh, one of the things that they have found is that forgiveness, unforgiveness can open your body up to sickness and disease. Uh, even in most cancer hospitals, they have something called forgiveness therapy now. And the Bible commands you and I to walk in forgiveness. Why? Because how can we say that Jesus forgave us and then we not extend the same forgiveness to others? But you cannot forgive in your flesh. When Jesus told the disciples in Luke chapter 17, he says, it is impossible that no offenses should arise, but woe to him through whom they do, right? And the disciples responded and, they, and he told them, he said, you should forgive seven times 70 in one day. And the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Because they knew it was going to take faith to forgive. Are you with me? And sometimes it's easy to deal with people that hurt us that we don't know, enemies, haters, folks that are jealous. But when it's the people you know, when it's the people you trusted, when it's the people that you bared your heart to, when it's the people that, uh, 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 David said it like this, it's the one I went to church with. If it was my enemy, I could deal with it, but it was my brother. If you're dealing with offenses, you know, and sometimes all year you're good until that cousin or that auntie or that uncle flies back in town and you got to see them for dinner tomorrow. And it arises again. And you want to be able to have faith to walk in forgiveness. I want you to stand on your feet.
can stand on your feet right where you are. Many of us need to deal with this. It's a matters of offense and unforgiveness. I'm going to ask Dr. Sandra O'Neill to come and pray. Jesus tells us in his word that when we do not forgive, then he does not forgive us. So we must forgive. He says in Matthew and Mark, when you stand praying, forgive, which lets us know that unforgiveness will hinder and delay our prayers and purposes. The Holy Spirit is the one that sheds the love of God in our heart so that we can forgive and allows us, as 1 Corinthians 13 says, to think the best. As Bishop says, offenses will come, but woe to those by whom offenses come. When offenses come, we have to know what to do. And before I was asked to lead this prayer, the Lord began to talk to me about some offenses that I was actually dealing with at the time, was I had to lift my thinking and humble myself. I had to take on the higher thought. I could not allow the thoughts that kept the offense in my mind to reign. I had to let them go. I had to rise above them. Because the word of God says that his thoughts are higher than ours. And last, as before I pray, the Bible says they will know us by the love that we have for one another. So, Father, we come against the spirit of offenses, the ruler, the strong man, and we come to be broken. We pray that the strength of offenses runs out of power and steam against the minds of God's people. We break your power. We pull you down by the power that's in the name of Jesus. We command your power, your stronghold, and your bondage to bind. And then we humble ourselves to forgive. We remove our self-importance. We remove our ego. And we forgive like Jesus who came down from a throne and died like a cursed man for us. And he forgave us. So we, through him, through the love of the Holy Spirit, we forgive we forgive our sexual offenders we forgive our rapists we forgive those that stole from us that lied on us we forgive those that betrayed us we forgive those that was our friends and our face and our haters when they turned our backs we forgive when we feel like we have the right to hold on we humble ourselves and we let it go Give the people of God like you gave me the strength to lay it down and let it go. Give us the strength to die in Christ. Crucify that flesh that wants to hold on to that offense and that unforgiveness. For you let us know that if we do not forgive, neither do you forgive us. Forgive us for stonewalling, not answering people, ghosting, disappearing on people. Therefore, we forgive parents that disappeared on us, friends that disappeared on us, friends that abandoned us and rejected us and let us go, dropped us. We forgive them, Father. We shake it off of us. We shake the emotional damage that is tried to browse us, the dysfunction that it tries to cause us. I come against every spirit of dysfunction in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood and we thank you for the victory now. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for the victory. 
we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise. Give God a praise. Say, Lord, I let it go. Come on, out of your mouth, say, Lord, I let it go. And I won't pick it back up again. Hallelujah. 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 The next thing I want to pray for is unity in the family and relationships. Unity in the family and in relationships. I'm going to ask Elder Jude and his lovely wife, Dr. Yaloma, to come and pray. Amen. Uh, and if you would just hear their quick exhortation and prayer, we're praying for family, unity, and relationship. Amen. Um, the scripture in the book of um, Ephesians, chapter 4, from verse 2 and 3, talks about how we need to, uh, in, the, in the NIV version, it says, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Now, we, we, we look at this scripture and we look at it from a, you know, from a church perspective, but what we fail to, what we may, we may fail to understand is the fact that if there's no family, there'll be no church. The family is the foundation of, of society. The family is the, is, is, is the very uh, uh, singular first unit of, of any kind of relationship. So if there's, if, there's, if there's trouble in the family, there's disunity in the family, there's disunity in, your, in the church, there's disunity in society. That's why we see all the, like, like Bishop was preaching, uh, 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 you know, in, in, in the series that, you know, on, on Wednesdays, Bible studies was, you know, uh, a while ago was talking about how uh, uh, the reason we see all the chaos in the street, the, 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 the anarchy in the street is because of the problem in the family. Because I tell you this, if the family is fixed at the very foundation of society, then we'll have no problems in our, in, in our, in our society. We'll have no problems in our church. There'll be unity in every area and in, in every sphere of life. So it, it is, isn't it like the enemy? Isn't it like the enemy to want to go after the, 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 the very foundation? The Bible talks about how if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That, that's why we need to spend time this morning and even this season praying for our families, praying for unity in the family because if we get it right at the very foundational structure, everything else falls into place. That's why I want to join you. I want to join you this morning to, uh, to just rise up for, 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 for those that need unity in their family, for those that are experiencing schisms, those that are experiencing uh, bitterness, uh, uh, separation, whatever, whatever, whatever is the case between, between parents and children, between spouses, between spouses, between spouses. Yes. It's the work of the enemy, and Jesus has manifested that he may destroy the works of the enemy, and that's the work of the enemy at the very foundational level. So, Father, we come to you this morning with the authority Thank in the name you, of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come to you knowing, Lord God in heaven, that you established... The, 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 the concept of family. We thank you, Lord God in heaven, because you had a plan and a purpose. We thank you because you are our father. We thank you, Lord God, because you, you made us understand as a church, we are the bride of Christ. These are words that I used to describe family, which shows your foundational interest in our families, Lord God in heaven. We come against the works of the enemy even right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every schism in the family, yes, Lord. bearing for bitterness from old past hurts, from the way parents treated their children or the way children uh, disrespected their parents. Lord God, we come against the spirit of this age in the name of the Lord Jesus that's trying to bring disunity in the family. Lord God, in heaven, we pray and ask, Lord God, that your spirit will begin to minister to our hearts right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, every paradigm. That needs to be shifted, Father. Thank you. We pray a shifting in our minds. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'll begin to walk towards unity. We begin to walk towards oneness. A house divided against itself cannot stand. And that's why we have the problems we're experiencing, Lord God. We pray for unity, for oneness. Lord Jesus, you speak in the book of John 17, say that they may be one. Lord Jesus. How can we be one in the church if we're not one in our homes? For that we pray, Lord God, for your spirit of unity. Yes, Lord Jesus. Your spirit of unity will bind us, will bind us, will glue us, Lord God. In the name Forgiveness that needs to go forth, we go forth freely. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Past hurts, pains, Father. I pray that you are healing hearts. Everything that's needed to foster unity, Father, you are establishing our homes. 
in blended families, oh God in heaven. I pray and ask that you are bringing, are causing a synergy, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are increasing even the communication in the home. Because sometimes it's the way things are said, not necessarily, not necessarily what, things, what, what things are said. The way things are said, Father, I pray and ask that you are pruning us. Yes, Lord. You are pruning us. You are teaching us. Because you are a teacher, Lord Jesus. You are teaching us how best to communicate with our children, how best to communicate with our parents, how best to communicate with our spouses. Even our extended family members, Lord God in heaven, you are restoring yes, Lord Jesus. the time that was lost in unforgiveness, breeding disunity in the family. You are restoring those years that the canker worms and the palmer worms have eaten in the name of the Lord Jesus. So you are establishing the family as the very fabric, as the very foundation of society, as the very foundation of the church in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray and ask that even in this season, in this time, Lord God, we'll walk with unity in our minds. Yes, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we will walk knowing that, Lord God in heaven, we need to be united with us, you know, you know in our families in order for us to experience you, the love that comes for you, from you as our Father. For this, we give you praise. We give you glory. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. I speak peace over your families. I speak peace over your families and over your marriages, and we come against every thought or even conversation of divorce. In the name of Jesus, every thought or even conversation of divorce, we stay together. Come on, say it out of your mouth. We, we stay together. What God has put together, let no man separate. We're getting ready to move into the healing portion of the service. I want to look at, uh, I believe it's James 5, uh, 17, where it talks about if any of you are sick, let him call for the elders of the church. You all can come forward. And I'm going to ask my elders to begin to uh, stand and get ready to lay hands. If you put on the screen, James 5, and uh, I believe it's 17, that's what I'm looking for here. There it is, 14, James 5 and 14. It says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call, read it with me, for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, doing what? Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And what does it say? Uh, verse 16, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, he will be forgiven. So I have the elders here. Uh, praying and there's uh, several uh, particular um, conditions I'm going to call out and right after they sing this song this is a song I so love it just ministers to me it's called Savior and it talks about uh, and you guys can begin preluding that now um, but it talks about how the one that Jesus saved is has come to worship him. And I believe that the presence of God is gonna be ushered in. And as they're singing that song, I'll begin to call out particular conditions and you can come, but I want the conditions that I call to come. And we will lay hands on you. And after we lay hands on you and pray for you, I want you to go back to your seat rejoicing and thanking God. If they'll bring my uh, chair here in the middle and uh, I'll turn it over to the worship team and they'll continue to sing that as I'm calling the different conditions, amen? How many believe in healing power? The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe that they shall cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues, right? The Bible says, they'll take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will not harm them, it says, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We have no power, but there's power in the name of Jesus, amen? And he came to earth to give us the power of eternity, uh, uh, of attorney, that we could use his name and believe in healing, amen? Amen. So our worship team will begin to sing that song uh, now. Savior, you're mine. Say, you're, you're my 
The first condition I want to pray for that the Lord put on my heart. If I'll put the list on this on the, my monitors here, but if you're dealing with any type of tumor, cyst, amen, tumors or cysts or growths, you've been diagnosed with a tumor, a cyst, or a growth, I want you to come now. I want you to come now. Dealing with anything in your body, cysts fibroids, any type of growth. Come, come. Yes, yes. 
we declare that Jesus is the healer. His name is Jehovah Rapha, God our healer. You know, I was thinking in the Bible, in Psalms 103, it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his what? Benefits. Whether you have a job or not, you got a benefit plan if Jesus is in your heart. Somebody say, I got a benefit plan. And then he lists what his benefit plans is. He forgives all of my iniquities and heals what? All of my diseases. That's the word. Anybody in here believe the word? Well, we're getting ready to lay hands and we command every cyst and growth to leave your body now. I, I loose the fire of God into your body now, and I command every cyst, every growth, every tumor to dry up and die now in Jesus' name. We release the power of God and the gifts of healings and the working of miracles in the name of Jesus. And we declare that you're reversing the results of MRIs. You're turning diagnosis around right now in Jesus' name. Now, if you're up here, say, Jesus, you are my healer, and I receive your healing power according to my faith. According to my faith, be it unto me in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, elders, lay hands. give God a praise. If you're dealing with, if you're battling, if you're battling, and I say battling because we never give up. I want to call cancer and terminal illness. If you have been diagnosed with cancer or any other terminal illness where they have given you a set amount of time to live, cancer and terminal illness, I want you to come now. I want you to come now. Don't be afraid. I see some coming from the back. Any type of terminal illness where they say anything that is uh, currently incurable. If you have any incurable disease that the doctors have said there is no cure, I want you to come now. Hallelujah. I want the saints praying. I want you to release your faith. 
Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yeah, come on. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to shout life. Somebody say shout life in the name of Jesus. You're going to live and not die. I see the power of God on you even now. In the name of Jesus, I reverse the words of the doctor and everything spoken against your life, it will fall. You shall live out all of your days in the name of Jesus. Satan, lose her body now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that you're setting her free from cancer. Cancer, go now in Jesus' name. Loose her in the name of Jesus. I command it to dry up, die, and disappear in the name of Jesus. The Zoe life of God go now into her body. I speak the fire of God into her now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Nothing is too hard for God. You can do the impossible. The Bible says nothing is impossible. Somebody shout, nothing is impossible to them that believe. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on her by faith in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you're restoring her life. Add years, add years. I command pain to go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mom. Lay your hand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, extend your faith this way. Extend your faith. The Bible says he saw their faith and forgave his sins. In the name of Jesus, nothing is impossible. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. I don't care what the doctors say. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, verse 1, whose report shall we believe? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a God who reverses doctor's reports. Don't we, Danny? God reverses doctor's reports. Hallelujah. I know what the doctors have said about me, but I believe the word of God. I've got my own physician his name is Jesus. He's the great physician. And he has the final say. Somebody say amen. amen. If you're dealing with any mental health or disorder, mental health or disorder, any mental health or disorder, I want you to come now. You're battling depression, anxiety, any other mental health or condition. I want you to come now in the name of Jesus. Don't you be afraid. Don't you be ashamed no matter what you're dealing with. We want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister right here in the flower, the flower top. I want to pray for her. Come right here. Mm -hmm. Yes any mental health or disorder. Battling depression, heaviness, sadness. I speak to your mind in the name of Jesus. Look at me. I speak to your mind. And I declare that you have the mind of Christ. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Say it out of your mouth by faith, I have a sound mind. I'm not crazy. I'm not losing my mind. I'm not gonna lose my daughter. I'm not gonna lose my family. I'm not gonna lose everything I have. God, you're keeping my mind. Say it with me, I will be anxious for nothing. I will trust the Lord. I call every part of your mind back. Lay your hands on your mind. I call every part of your mind back. Anything broken from relationships, 
Every mental perplexity, everyone that spoke and tried to break you, every mental issue from your childhood, I command your mind to come back whole. By faith, say, I reclaim my mind. Every generational curse that's run through my family concerning my mind, it's broken now in Jesus' name. Come on, sweetheart, come on. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that you're healing. In Jesus' name. Come on, elders, let's lay hands. We cast the devil out. We cast it out now in Jesus' name. I come against every mental disorder in the name of Jesus. You will keep her mind in perfect peace yeah, yeah. whose mind is stayed on you in the name of Jesus. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Say, Father. Say with me, Father. I receive healing from my mind. By your stripe, you are healed.
you point your hands this way. Point your hands this way. Heal us. Participate in this deliverance that is happening. The Lord God is my healer. Heal us. Yeah. The As the, some of us are still praying, I want to pray over chemical and hormonal imbalances. Chemical or hormonal imbalances. Anything that is being issues with the pituitary gland, uh, any type of hormonal or chemical imbalance, I want you to come now. Just got a couple more to pray for. Are y'all being blessed right now? Come on, we, we, we want those that are dealing with any type of sickness and disease, we want them to come. Chemical and hormone balances come now. Amen. Come closer, come closer. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those of you that are in the pews, I want you to release your faith praying for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Uh, you're participating in this service. Uh, sometimes we come to be ministered to, but sometimes we come to minister. Amen. So those of you that are walking in divine health, I want you to release your faith Amen. I want you to release your faith to your brothers and sisters up here praying for them. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that we can intercede. That means we stand in the gap. Amen. We stand in the gap. Can y'all do that with me? That means you pray for your brothers and your sister. You stretch your hands this way and you pray for them. Amen. We serve a God who regulates. Are you listening? Those of you that are up here dealing with chemical and hormonal imbalances. Look at me. We serve a God who regulates. And whatever's missing, whatever is broken, God can restore. There is nothing impossible for him. And oftentimes, we get to a place where we are learning to just cope and live with it. But I believe we serve a God that says we don't have to cope. We can be completely delivered and set free. And I don't care how long it's been. Well, I've been dealing with this for so long. The man at the gate called Beautiful, it was over 40 years. But when it's God's moment, he can do in an instant what it would take doctors years to do. So I speak to your bodies now. I speak to your pituitary glands and thyroids and anything that regulates hormones and I command it to line up with the word of God. God is shifting your body right now as I'm speaking to you by faith. The power of the Holy Spirit is here. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is the gifts of healings and the working of miracles. And what the doctors say cannot be done, he will do in an instant in the name of Jesus. Is there anybody who believes with me? I command your bodies to be regulated and normalized. Your temperatures to be normalized. I even hear God saying he's shifting uh, eggs, things that have uh, that has, uh, caused you not to be able to get pregnant. It's affected the ability to have children God, turn it around. There's nothing too hard for you. And we declare according to your word that by your stripes, we are healed. Out of your mouth, say, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Come on, elders, let's lay hands. Hallelujah. Come on, right here. Lay hands on you. Yes, yes. Pastor Sander.
Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. The man you say, the man you say, has come to worship you. Set free and deliver, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We go back to our seats praising God, thanking God for the victory. Hallelujah. You are my In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Any neurological condition, neurological or nerve issue, to come over here on my right, your left neurological nerve conditions. Any impairment in your nerves, the loss of function. It's okay if you've come up for multiple things. We're believing God, you're gonna be healed of them all. Amen, right there, amen. Amen, come on sis, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah any nerve damage, neurological conditions, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 One of the conditions, hold on, hold on. One of the conditions that was repeated in the Bible is the condition of palsy. Palsy is a nerve condition. It's the loosening of nerves. Remember when they brought the man before Jesus and they tore up the roof to bring him down, he was learned, uh, lame because of the palsy. Uh, even the woman who was bowed over for 18 years, she was bent over. It was a, a physical condition, but there was also nerve related. The man at the gate called beautiful, the Bible says he received strength in his ankles immediately. And he says he went leaping and running, but nobody thinks about the fact that man never walked for 40 years. So the nerves had to be healed as well. We serve a God who heals nerve conditions. It's all throughout scripture. Everything we do in this church is according to the word of God. So I speak to your bodies now by faith. And I declare in Jesus name that your nerves be healed now. Now in the name of Jesus. Your nerves be set free. Every neurological and brain miscommunication, I command it to line up with the word of God. I speak to your spinal cord. I speak, Father, to the branches of the nerves going into the hands and the legs and the, and the bodies. And it's those of you that are challenged in your digestive system and your metabolism as a result of nerve issues, issues with your eyes, I command them to be healed now. Nerve pain and neuropathy, I command it to be turned around now by the blood of Jesus. And I thank you in the name of Jesus that full restoration of function is returning in the name of Jesus. We declare it now by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, elders, lay hands. Hallelujah. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Say
declare in Jesus' name that he's reversing the symptoms of stroke. Yes. Those of you that have had strokes and lost function, we decree in Jesus' name. Is there anybody that believes with me that you are reversing the condition of stroke and you shall pursue and without fail recover all neurological function in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Just two more things I want to pray for. If you're dealing with any metabolic syndrome, any metabolic syndrome that is high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, anything of that nature, any type of metabolic syndrome, if you have any levels that are off, blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, hypertension, diabetes, the hardening of the veins, I want you to come now. Hallelujah. Those of you that have been prayed for, go back to your seat praising God and thanking him for healing. Hallelujah. Metabolic syndromes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. I hear the Lord specifically saying the hardening of the veins. Any, any issues uh, with the, uh, the aorta? Uh, Dr. Tracy, is there anything I'm forgetting uh, in, the, in that regard? Uh, metabolic syndromes, pressure, height, um, any? Uh, aortic stenosis or any atherosclerosis. Aortic stenosis, and I don't know what that other word he said, but y'all know what it is. <laughs> we got several doctors in this church, so yes. Now look at this line. I come against the power of the enemy. We break this cycle in our culture. I decree and declare we're going to have a lot of old people in this church. Because you're going to live out all your days. We're going to have a lot of gray hair in this church. And it's not going to be from stress. It's going to be from long life. Yes. Declare it to be so. I'm going to have gray hair. I decree in the name of Jesus the assignment against grandfathers. Did you hear me? We break the power of the enemy trying to take grandfathers. Everybody got grandfathers but us. Did that hit you? We're going to have old men in this church. Yeah, we're a young church, but we're going to grow old, and, and, and we're going to be here, and we're going to be walking in church, and they're not going to be wheeling us in here in Jesus' name. We're going to have a silvers club. I'm prophesying. Y'all think I'm telling jokes. I'm prophesying. We come against hypertension, high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, heart disease. In the name of Jesus, tremors. In the name of Jesus. Now, we're going to call one thing out, and, that, and that's uh, undisciplined eating. You can't rebuke that devil. You just got to follow instructions. You can't rebuke the soul out of a pig. Before we rebuke the devil, I'm going to rebuke you. Make sure you're eating the right thing. Is there an amen? Ain't no amens for that? Put them ham hocks down. But we declare that the power of God is here to heal and deliver. I am decreeing that the next time you go back to the doctor, they're going to take you off your medication in the name of Jesus. Until then, follow the instructions of your doctor. Bishop didn't say throw away your medication. 
Let me say it one more time. Bishop did not say, throw away your medication. I am decreeing that the doctor is going to take you off your medication because there's going to be a significant turnaround in your cholesterol and your blood pressure and your diabetes. Matter of fact, it's not yours. Give it back to who it belongs to. Give it back. So by faith, lift that hand, by faith, I give my condition, you call out your condition, I give it back to the enemy. It does not belong to me. It's trespassing because I belong to Jesus. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. According to your word, God, by your stripes and with your stripes, I am healed. You carried my griefs and my sorrows. You were wounded for my transgressions in the name of Jesus. And I declare that I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, elders, go ahead and lay hands. In the name of Jesus, come on, dear. Yeah, yeah. 